Piper. This is Wilson with you. So this week's video is out late and that reason is because I was waiting for my order of sun batch to come in and I wanted to give a first impression on my part. Um, I was uh, looking forward to it and instead of giving a second impression video where I usually smoke one bowl and then I record my second bowl full and then give you my review, this is going to be a pure first impression video. All right, so it may not be long, but I'm going to give you just a, a look at the blend itself, you know, give you the, the 10 notes and then uh, my experience with the first bowl. Uh, you probably already know that this is very popular blend, uh, maybe the most popular small batch blend that Cornell and Dill is releasing this year. I'm confident in that. And that's because Sun Bear has a reputation. Um, they released two other small batch Sun Bear blends in the past. Uh, don't quote me 100% on that, but I'm pretty confident it's two. And there's some distinguishment on, on exactly how it's made, but overall it's, it's fairly the same. Um, but if I could say it this way, maybe I can approach this first impression different than many others. And here's why. The negative, I gotta tell you up front, I have not tried the other two Sun Bears, all right? I, I didn't try those, those blends. Um, I wasn't interested at the time. I wanted to focus on kind of getting my teeth into te pipe tobacco and, and the plethora of blends out there. And so I didn't chase small, bl small batch blends so much. Some of them I did. Uh, so that's one reason. Um, second, I just didn't really want to put the money in to towards them. Um, so that's the negative. I can't compare those two for you. And that would be nice at, in some points, in some respects. But here's maybe the positive. Um, those who have tried Sun Bear, the other formulas, the other blends, there's very uh, a, a very uh, high view of this line, and they may come into this blend here, this one, uh, this new edition, and maybe the presuppositions are already very high on it, and so that that can influence us, right? We all have presuppositions on and, and views and things like that and so that can influence our opinion of a blend so hopefully I can give you a I'm gonna try to give you a pretty level-headed uh, opinion of it if I can think of other blends to compare it to at the end I will definitely let you know all right all right so all right so with that all said let's get a bit of a description of the blend just so you know uh, what it's all about um, so a blend uh, the finest bright in red Virginia is balanced by 2019 Bosma and 2018 Izmir Orientals. Sun Bear Mountain Flower commends itself with subtle notes of raw, ethically sourced blackberry and wildflower honey from two family-owned apiaries in Morganton, North Carolina, a small town in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Sourced from the community we called home for over 20 years, this mountain flower honey combines with a whisper of silver tequila and elderflower to complement spe specially selected veritable tobaccos, elevating their fruity floral notes for a bright, refreshing character and a creamy, rounded finish. All right, so there's a bit of a background. Essentially, it boils down to a Virginia Oriental blend with some topping. Um, there's conversation, is this an, an aromatic or not? Um, and you have people going on both sides. I think the Cornell and Deal folks like Jeremy Reeves will say it's not a true aromatic, um, though obviously it has a topping, but I actually have a video on aromatics, by the way, if you're really not sure where that line is, I, I give you some help there. So, uh, so there's a background of the blend, uh, just a quick one. And let's go ahead and give you a look at actually what the blend looks like. All right, well, here we are with Sun Bear. I just popped the tin of it and pulled out some of the flake. It does come in a flake, but almost a broken flake. And, and this is typically the, the consistent uh, format of Cornell Dill's blend, their, their flake blends, excuse me. So they're, they're usually more of a broken flake. They're very thin, easily uh, breakable. And, and that's not a negative per se, unless you really, really like your flakes whole. Uh, but they're very thin, break apart, and very moist. Uh, I'm not going to air this out, but uh, it is uh, more on the moist side. And, and I actually may prefer that, to be honest with you. So uh, you can see the varietals, uh, the Virginia Oriental balance here of the darker and brighter leaf. Uh, some of that red Virginia, bright Virginia, and uh, a bit of the brownish dark uh, Oriental as well in, in the varieties there. So... Again, breaks apart quite easily. I like that. 
it makes it easy to pack your pipe. So there is a look at the blend. And like I said, it's a quick look. It's a quick description I'm giving you uh, because it's, well, frankly, it's out and sold out. And so I'm not going to go into many details, but let's go ahead and move into what the taste is like. Um, I have it packed in my Peterson B10, which is usually my go-to Virginia, uh, one of my Virginia pipes or uh, vir mainly priority Virginia blends. And I packed it with somewhat of a fold and stuff but again, it's in a broken flake almost format when I picked up a, a few wads of flake. So it's kind of in a, just a broken flake format. So I'm going to go ahead and light it up and get some thoughts on it. So it lights up pretty easily, um, I have to say. The moisture content's not really an issue by no means. So surprisingly, two things that pop off. Uh, the tequila is evident, and contrary to what I've heard, the honey is evident. So I can taste that topping, the, the sweet honey topping. And I have to say, I can tell it's honey. It's not just like, a, well, a sugar topping. Uh, there's that, honey has a taste. If you've had honey, you know what honey tastes like. And it does have that, uh, that, that character to it. Wow, the Orientals are great in this. So I want to tell you, I've had Virginia Oriental blends. I'm not a big fan of um, uh, GOP's, uh, is it Embarcadero? It's a Virginia Oriental blend. And I, I was not a fan of that so much. Um, I didn't feel like there was enough sweetness in the blend to, uh, to keep me with it, like I like in Virginia blends. And so uh, the, the contrary to that type of blend this this definitely carries a sweetness but the orientals and i was about to talk about the orientals there the orientals they offer this nice spicy floral note um, the virginias both are well balanced um and, and i'm what i mean by that is i'm tasting both you know the the uh, grassy notes of the, of the white Virginia, or excuse me, bright Virginia, I should say, uh, citrusy with um, more of a darker fruity notes from the red Virginias. But that tequila is there, just, just steady in the background, but constant. Um, and, and that balance, especially with the Orientals, does give this creaminess, and so... Um, I was not expecting that. I know it mentions it in the description, but there is this creaminess that is uh, kind of continuing through the smoke. So what I'm going to do is uh, pause the video, get more uh, time in the bowl with the blend, and kind of see if it changes any at all. All right, so again, the Orientals are really great in this blend. Uh, they really pop, and especially through the... Uh, retro hell through the nasal passage uh, very spicy not not a negative way I don't mean that negatively it's not like a dark fired uh, or Kentucky spice um, or Perique spice uh, it's it's just a light um, it's a light distinction of, of, of the various spices we try right we, we think just spices we use in cooking and there's a variety of spices we use in cooking. So when I say spice, I don't mean pepper so much, and maybe something like a paprika or something like that. I don't, I don't know where to tie it in with, in the culinary department. So I'm gonna kind of back off of that. But but is a is a spiciness that I you'll you'll find in other blends with with Oriental. The floral notes. So now I'll kind of give you a comparison. This, this combination here reminds me, actually, of Savinelli's 140 blend, and I think that is also a limited blend. Uh, they come out with it a couple of times, but that blend contains a dark, or Kentucky leaf uh, that's been dark fired in Italy, and it has a floral note, and it, that's really bringing this to mind, or this is really bringing that to mind, I should say. Um, and I really like that, because I enjoy that blend. So, kind of final thoughts here. Uh, again, one thing I like about this blend that I've 
haven't always found in Virginia Oriental blends is the sweetness is great. Um, I, I like my sweet, kind of a natural sweetness in a blend, so not aromatic-y. Um, and the honey allows that or brings that out, and I'm really enjoying that. Um, I don't consider this an aromatic. Uh, an, an, an aromatic is meant to taste a certain way. I, 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 it's not a great definition, but... Um, you know, autumn evening is supposed to taste like maple and uh, blood, uh, cult, blood red moon is supposed to taste like what, what cherry um, and primarily that taste. Well, this you're you, you are tasting honey. You are having some of that tequila come through, but you are mostly just tasting the the character of the leaves um, that that's and they're almost accentuating those 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 flavors. Right. And so uh, that's why I don't really want to consider this an aromatic. It's just a topped. Virginia Oriental blend, and um, I, I do think it's great. Uh, it's it's a solid blend. It is uh, probably above my expectations. I want to say I, I did not have high expectations of this blend. Um, it was just well taught or spoken of. Um, I thought there was a bit of over exaggeration. If I have to be honest, I am glad I picked up what I did. Um, I think it will it will seller well uh, with with age um, it will certainly help but off the bat first a fresh 10 I'm, I'm impressed i uh, kind of give you some help so you can't get this unless you're going to go pay, pay extra money from someone who already bought it if you're wanting to try something similar can i point you to uh one that's going to be closer and that's bijou by cornell and deal all right so bijou is a is a blend that is meant to be cellared and i think you'll have a better uh, flavor profile if you actually have it with some time on it maybe a year or two especially but Bijou has a similar s format Virginia Oriental um, it does have some honey in it as well and I think you will appreciate it it's not fully uh, it's not identical right uh, but but it's fairly close and so if you're wanting to try something similar that is the immediate thing that pops in my mind uh, I mentioned Savinelli 140 I don't know if it's available. I don't think it is. If you can find it, you're going to find some similarities there. Uh, a lot of similarities, actually. It's it's a summer springtime type of blend. This is a summer springtime type of blend. So um, I think you'll find those two solid comparisons if you're wanting to try something similar to this and yet you can't get your hands on this. And if you didn't get your hands on this, guess what? It's okay. All right? You you, you did not miss out of a extraordinary piece of tobacco history and you're you know, you're, you're lesser for it, right? I, I always just want to throw that out there because um, I'm great I got my hands on it, but um, guys, there's good tobacco out there. Uh, by Cornell and Dale, by, by the other blends, and Savinelli, and Kohlhaas and Kopp, and Peterson, and etc. cetera. So, uh, you know, don't, don't feel like you really missed out and your life's lesser for it, right? If you have questions or you've tried it, you got some, you want to try, you have tried it, and you want to give your comments, uh, your, your opinion, please do below. What did you think of it? Do you think uh, it lived up to your, rep, you know, to its reputation, to your standards? Um, I'd love to know what you think. All right, that's all I have this week, guys. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're blessed, and uh, we will talk to you very soon.